Dear guests, dear colleagues, dear Professor Silagi, thank you for uh, inviting me to hold this lecture at Budapest. Um, I will start my lecture with um, an overview which reaches from 1848 to present days. And <clears throat> this is a, uh, <clears throat> sorry, a tour d'horizon. Um, and it is um, only possible to point out uh, the main stages in uh, the course of this development. What are the trendsetting consequences of 1848 for today's Austria? That is in general, from the point of view of an, a constitutional historian in Austria, despite of granting uh, fundamental uh, rights, the setting of modern fundaments of um, uh, for handling the state powers. So we find monocratic ministries responsible uh, to the parliament. We have uniform publication of laws since 1849, uniformed institutions for serving public administration and judiciary divided from each other. And at least the formation of modern parliaments for the central state as well as as well as for um, the provinces. So I, I need um, um, the, the Terminal Technicus province and not land because um, this is more exactly to characterize the Austrian um, parts of the Habsburg monarchy. Um, all these institutions, which I listed up here, are uh, existing until present days. Left of um, 1848, that is furthermore the abolition of the ancient manorial system. This was followed by the removal of a better monarchical um, administration and the transmission of uh, their uh, powers to the local communities based on the principles of self-government. The constitutional achievements of 1848 were initially as good as limited to the central state as a whole. Uh, the Austrian provinces took part in this development only temporarily in 1848 and 49. In as so far, the Austrian uh, constituent national assembly called Reichstag assembled in Vienna in July, uh, and later on it was transferred in October to Kromerschitz in Moravia. Uh, this Reichstag uh, intended to give uh, the Austrian provinces uh, nearly the character of federal states, and he intended to grant him uh, to grant them uh, a separate chamber in the future parliament, the following um, Reichstag. And comparable to this is uh, the modern um, Austrian. Um, Federal Council, which was established in 1920. And at least all these um, uh, initiatives uh, failed, the draft of the Reichstag failed, and uh, this was due to the uh, anti constitutional <coughs> attitudes of the Emperor Francis Joseph. He abolished um, the constitutional system uh, a, short, <coughs> a short time later, and then um, it came to um, um, development which uh, leads to a new absolutism and um, a an, uh, an, uh, period which was uh, characterized as an um, estate monarchy, as you mentioned, <laughs> from 1861 on. The constitutional movements of um, 1848 also affected Austria as a member of the uh, German Confederation, to which the Austrian Emperor um, joined only with his German hereditary provinces. These are the provinces which were part uh, of the uh, Holy Roman Empire until 1860. Um, the, drafting, uh, the draft constitution approved by the Constituent National Assembly at St. Paul's in Frankfurt on Main, this is the seat of the German uh, Confederation, provided for the transformation of uh, the uh, 
uh, confederation of uh, states into a federal state uh, with uh, the name German Reich. Um, this solution was called Greater German Solution, and it was supported by most of the deputies from the federal areas of the Austrian Empire. Deputies of, from Austria were elected in the uh, German hereditary provinces, and uh, they included also Bohemia, Moravia, Silesia, and Trieste. Uh, uh, so uh, these were uh, the territories in which was not only spoken German language. And uh, this is one point which uh, leads to the failure of the Frankfurt pro project. And the other was that uh, the um, constitutional situation in uh, Austria from March 1849 on uh, was incompatible with uh, this greater uh, German solution because the Austrian um, constitution of 1849 um, included Hungary and the provinces of Hungary and also Dalmatia, Galicia and uh, the Austrian Italian provinces. So um, this project failed due to the um, constitutional situation in Austria. And apart from these uh, consequences uh, and apart from all that, there is another point of interest um, which is the realization of self-determination of nationalities which came into being at least in 1918. But it can also seen, uh, be seen as a long distance effect left of 1848 because it came to the fulfillment of that what the young nations of Czech, Polish and Yugoslav people had expected in the springtime of nations in 40. Uh, in 1848, and 70 years later, um, a couple of new years, uh, new states uh, came into being in the center of the European map as a result of the collapse of the Austrian monarchy in 1918. This was the Czechoslovakian Republic, the state of the Serbs, uh, Croatians, and Slovenians, and the Polish uh, Republic. And as a late fruit of the revolution of 1848, probably could also be seen and mentioned the renewed attempt of Austria, uh, of course now restricted to the German-speaking areas to realize unity with the German Reich. This started with a declar uh, declaration on 12th November uh, in 1918, and it proclaimed the accession of German Austria to the uh, German Republic, and this um, was called the Anschluss. Um, it was not an occupation, it was not an annexation, but it was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, the goal to make a state treaty which allows uh, German Austria to be a federal part of the uh, German Reich. This uh, goal failed, due to the treaties of Paris, uh, the treaties of Versailles and Saint-Germain, but this goal remained a central objective of the German-Austrian foreign policy until 1933, until uh, the National Socialists um, got the power in Germany. And at least it is a um, an interesting, it's interesting to note, however, that following the overthrow of the uh, National Socialism rule in Europe in 1945, only Austria and Hungary within the borders of the state treaties of uh, 1909 and 1920 of Saint-Germain and Trianon remained unchanged until the present day. All other uh, new states which came into being 1908, in 1918 were changed in their, um, in their shapes. So let us now come to uh, the most important setting trend result of, uh, for, of 1848, and this is especially and part, uh, particular the grant of fundamental rights for individual uh, citizens. The intellectual roots of modern fundamental rights are embedded in natural law uh, doctrines 
at uh, the late 18th century, according to which every human being should have individual innate rights as already granted in the Austrian General Civil Code of 1811, uh, paragraph 16, which um, um, in, includes uh, this um, grant of innate rights to all citizens um, within uh, the, um, the Austrian um, monarchy, the, uh, the, the German uh, provinces of the Austrian uh, monarchy. And of course, at these times, uh, state authorities, uh, authorities were not obliged to respect individual rights as equal rights, and uh, in this time, they varied on reasons of social status and uh, of religion. Since the declaration of human and civil rights in Europe after the outbreak of the French Revolution in uh, 1789, fundamental rights usually were granted in constitutional law. The idea of binding state actions to, norm, to norms regulated in codifications of constitutional law also gained importance for individuals because such norms were now linked to uh, the participation of uh, people in the exercise of state power represented by a parliament, and the parliament should act as a political party of the people. Fundamental rights uh, thus were given the character of constitutional law, but they were regarded only as instructions and guidelines for all state actions, and not mentioned as a modern subjective public rights for, indi uh, rights for individuals. Embedded in uh, constitutional norms, um, fundamental rights were treated as higher ranking, even as fundamental rights, and due to the states, uh, to state grants, they were detached from their natural uh, law uh, foundations. However, the idea of individual equality based on natural law continued to have an influence in the coming constitutions. They led to the overcoming of the corporate structures of uh, the ancient societies. In Central Europe, within the German Confederation of 1815, these ideas were uh, pushed by liberal circles who propagated for fundamental rights being enshrined in a state constitution because this would open participation for people and would grant them freedom rights against state despotism. Fundamental rights in this meaning uh, for the first time were constitutionally uh, granted in Bavaria just in 1818 and uh, followed by other German uh, territories after 1819, e.g. this is Württemberg or Baden. And in consequence of the July Revolution of 1830, since then in most of all German states, um, constitutionally, um, uh, constitutions were uh, uh, set in uh, force, except two states, this was Prussia and Austria. In Austria, uh, the, grant, the granting of uh, fundamental rights and uh, the passing of constitutions uh, with uh, constitutional law um, came into being in March 1848. For the first time, it was granted uh, equality of citizens, freedom of press, freedom of edu uh, education, freedom of learning, and other uh, fundamental rights followed in catalogues of fundamental rights which had been created in April 48 and in March uh, 1849 as a part of uh, constitutional um, codifications, which finally found the way into the basic laws of uh, 1867, um, two basic laws in um, at all it were five basic laws which were set in force in 1867. Staatsgrundgesetze uh, named uh, was um, a basic law about the general rights of citizen, and another. A uh, basic law of 1867 established a constitutional court with the name Reichsgericht, and um, 
in, uh, 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 this connection is, was uh, first mentioned in the Reichstag draft and in the March Constitution of 1849 with uh, a competence to decide fundamental rights complaints. And this was renewed in 1867. And later on, both um, basic laws about fundamental rights and about the constitutional court, Reichsgericht, uh, were uh, transferred to the provisional constitutional law of the Republic of German Austria in 1918. The range of uh, fundamental rights at this time uh, was a little bit expanded step by step in 1918 and 19 by resolutions passed in the provisional and constituent national assemblies as well in the provisions of the Treaty of Saint-Germain. Attempts to create a new catalogue of fundamental rights in the course of the drafting of a new constitution in uh, 19, uh, uh, which leads to the federal uh, constitutional law of 1920 failed and uh, this was due to ideological differences between the political parties, between social democrats and Christian social uh, party. So um, it was decided to um, transfer the basic law of 1867 being a part of the federal constitutional law of uh, uh, 1920. These fundamental rights then remained until the end of the constitutional order of uh, 1920, after less than 15 years of validity in 1933. Within this short time, there was no initiative uh, made to create a new catalogue of fundamental rights. Under the following regime of Austrofascism, which was initiated by a coup d'etat of the Christian Social Party in March 1933. This is at the same moment as um, the National Socialists uh, gained the power in Germany. Uh, it was now possible to create a new catalog of fundamental rights with the enactment of a new authoritarian constitution in 1934, a constitution based on estates um, recruited from social groups representing uh, economic and uh, cultural interests, but the content of uh, the catalog of fundamental rights remained linked to the catalog of fundamental rights, which was a part of the federal constitutional law of uh, 1920. This is a remarkable aspect that uh, the fundamental rights followed the um, the, um, followed uh, the federal constitutional law of 1920. The interlude of uh, Austrofascism came to an end with the occupation of Austria in 1938, in March of 1938, and then the Weimar Reichsconstitution, which now became decisive uh, for Austria, had been stripped off uh, the fundamental fund, uh, foundations by the National Socialist regime, even since 1933. Therefore, there were no space for fundamental rights from this time on. After a resurrection of Austria in April 45, in, in the spirit of uh, the 1920s uh, constitution, Austria returned to her formal uh, to have former fundamental laws by transferring the federal constitutional law in the version of uh, March 33. At the end of these developments, uh, we can see that Austria uh, returned to the roots of the fundamental rights based on the ideas of 1848. And the further, the further development shows that um, a new, it failed to create a new catalogue of fundamental rights, despite um, of um, uh, the organization of an Austrian uh, convention, which was appointed to, um, to uh, work out a new constitution for Austria. And uh, this was, um, an, um, for another time, so to say, uh, failed to 
um, failed because of ideological differences like in 1920. And on the other hand, um, new fundamental rights were adopted following international agreements. There are several um, United Nations conventions. This is the European Charter of Human Rights of uh, 1950, which was set into force in Austria in 1958. And um, this is a consequence of uh, uh, Austria's accession to the European Union. Uh, the cha Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union is a part of the Austrian constitutional law. And so at the end, we can say, um, see as a result of this development, Austria is actually confront, confronted with three catalogues of uh, fundamental rights, consisting of fund fundamental rights, and in addition, uh, in addition to this, with three Supreme Courts uh, supervising violations against uh, fundamental rights. One is in Vienna, the Austrian Constitutional Court, the other uh, European Courts, one in Strasbourg and the other in Luxembourg. So thank you. <laughs>